All right, let's jump right in on this beautiful purple clematis painting. I'm using Liquitex acrylic paints and I am painting on Canson multimedia paper. I am using a total of five colors and five colors only. So you do not have to invest in a lot of different colors to do this clematis painting. And I'm using only two brushes. I have drawn my clematis painting on paper first and I even drew the little filaments in the center of the flower. Uh, so you'll see me painting around all of those little details in the center of the flower. Uh, I do recommend that you draw your painting completely out and the reason for that is what that will do it gives you a road map so basically you know where you're going with your paint you know where you're going with your design beforehand. So these petals are, there are six in total and they are, the basic shape of them are almond shape and they are directly across from each other. So you can kind of think of in those terms as you're drawing out your design. So six petals directly opposite each other and basic shape is an almond shape. If you simplify shapes as you're drawing and painting, that will kind of help you. Um, it'll make it not so intimidating for you as you're working. So the important thing, um, I'm beginning with a dioxanine purple first and that is the shadow color for this clematis painting. So you're going to use that dioxanine purple in all of the little creases in the petals and that will be the area that is used around the center of the petals um, and it is a really beautiful, um, it's kind of a solid covering purple shade and uh, it's very deep so it's a great shadow color to use um, for purple flowers so again that color gets added around the um, petal towards the center of the flower and also again in the creases of the petals so overall this paint design uses a titanium white a medium olive green, a hooker's green, ultramarine blue, and dioxanine purple. And the dioxanine purple, again, I've stated, is the shadow color. The mid-range color for these petals is dioxanine purple, and you're going to mix it with ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue, I think, is probably my favorite blue to paint with. Um, it's kind of a purpley blue and it mixes beautiful with a dioxanine purple and that color gets added. That's the mid-range color. Um, and then for your highlight color for these petals, you're going to mix that mix with some titanium white. Um, and you'll see that you basically need, anytime you're painting anything realistic, you need a, a shadow color, you need a mid-range color, and you need a highlight color. Now, within that range of colors, you can also mix up lots of different little mixes um, and vary the shade by adding a little bit more blue in some areas, um, a little bit more of the deeper color in certain areas, and a little bit more of the white in certain areas. Um, each petal you want to kind of paint a little bit differently and use a little bit of a different mix, uh, especially where those petals overlap each other so that shadow color will help you show petals that are kind of behind another petal you want to definitely have that area be a little bit more in shadow which means you would use the dioxane purple a little bit deeper in that area and then also on top of that where that petal would maybe be overlapping another petal you want to then bring up the highlights brighter in that area where those petals overlap. I do have another uh, video that talks specifically about how to paint overlapping petals and it's a great quick little video to watch. Um, it's very important to have sort of those areas defined very well. So clematis petals are very, um, they're, they're a simple, 
um, shape, remember just kind of look for the very simplified version of a shape that you can see. And again, um, they're basically an almond shape and I've got the uh, deeper color down towards the center of the flower. And then also there's some little folds in the petals and I wanted to show that. So you can see me using that dioxanine purple in those areas where I wanted the petal to have like a little bit of a fold. Um, and you can see particularly here, I've got even little folds in the petals themselves. So that dioxanine purple goes in those areas. And then the areas next to that, you're gonna wanna kind of highlight and use a little bit brighter mix of the titanium white mixed with um, that ultramarine blue. And you can see I've painted two petals here this moves pretty quickly and the so I painted one fully petal fully and then you're going to want it to dry down a little bit and then you can go back in with a stronger highlight color and um, really uh, pull those highlights out of those petal areas so I'm back to now working on the third petal and using that dioxining purple laying that down first and all of the shadow areas on each petal so that is my beginning step for each petal the dioxining purple goes down first and then i will mix up um, that mix of the dioxining purple with the ultramarine blue now some painters will um, mix up all of their paints beforehand and um, have them sort of on your palette. I like to have my colors kind of separate on my palette and mix as I go along. And for me, I enjoy that much more because um, that sort of mixing on the palette as you go, because you can vary the petals um, from one petal to the other uh, and just to order add some interest to your painting so it looks a little bit more realistic. So this mix right now, um, is the dioxin and purple mixed with the ultramarine blue. And you can see it's kind of a little bit more of like a lilac purple. And um, that goes up next to and slightly overlaps the darker purple just to add some interest and show that those petals have um, some folds and there are some deeper areas in those petals. And again, you can see in this beginning stages of this fourth petal now is the laying down of the dioxanine purple first, just by itself. And again, um, those 
that deeper purple gets laid in all of the areas of the petals that would be um, showing some folds. And I'm using that number size 10 round brush. Um, and you can see how smoothly that paint comes off of my paintbrush. Again, uh, I've stated this in other videos before, but what I see a lot of beginners doing and they struggle with is using your paintbrush to dry. So you want to make sure first off that you are dampening your paintbrush in clean water, removing a lot of that water so that you are not um, dripping paint everywhere, you're not dripping water all over your work, but you are loading your paintbrush with enough paint so that as it comes off of your paintbrush onto your canvas or whatever you're painting on, and in this case I'm painting on paper, so that it's smooth and it feels creamy and there's no drag, which means that your paintbrush is not dragging onto the paper. It should feel good in your hand coming um, off of the paintbrush onto the paper or canvas. And um, that second layer is that mix of the dioxin purple mixed with the ultramarine. So I'm gonna let that petal dry down a little bit and go ahead and start base coating the next petal. And you can see how deep I leave that um, petal um, with the dioxin purple. You can see already I'm building in sort of the appearance of there being a, a dimension to this flower. And the petal that I'm painting now, I'm gonna leave that deep color right next to that um, petal that I paint is, painted previously. You can see the difference in color. That is hugely important um, so that when the petals are overlapping each other, that you can see a difference in the color, in the value. Um, to show that that petal that I'm painting right now is actually underneath the petal that was painted previously. So that's kind of how you get dimension and a realistic effect. It's all in the shading of your painting. So when you're painting flowers um, and petals like this clematis flower, that the petals are um, have lots of folds in them. The important thing to kind of think of in terms um, when you're painting a petal that has folds such as these clematis petals is you're painting hills and valleys. So in the valley section of your petal you want that petal that area um, to remain deep and dark and that will give the illusion of depth. And the so the darks go in the shadow in the valley section of those petals and then the lights and or the highlight colors go at the top of the hill. So that helps to kind of simplify painting um, in the folds of the petals. If you can kind of think in those terms um, and sort of blend those areas together, um, that will really help to kind of simplify your thought process in placing, placing your color. Um, it'll help to simplify it and it will you'll be a lot less frustrated if you can kind of think of the painting um, in those terms of painting hills and valleys in your petals. Now I'm using um, that mid-range color right now. So basically there's just been two colors painted on these petals. Um, and then again, you can see I usually let the previous petal dry down a little bit and then go back over and sort of deepen color and or um, at this point I'm deepening the mid-range color, which is that mix of the dioxinine purple and the ultramarine blue. And then I will typically go into the highlight color. You can see here, there's a visible difference in the color that's being applied now as opposed to the previous two uh, colors. So there's a lot more white added to the dioxin purple and ultramarine mix. And you can really see those petals um, brighten up and uh, that highlight color really makes a huge difference in your petals. But remember, you need all three of those elements, all three of those different values in your painting. You need the shadow color, the mid-range color, and the highlight color. Now I'm starting the very last petal, and um, again, using that dioxin and purple, and I'm working around all of those little filaments in the center of the clematis flower.
So again, that deep dark color gets added down towards the center. So it makes it look like the flower center is down a little bit deeper and the petals are coming up and out of the center. And you can see that I'm using uh, that highlight color. Um, that is kind of the last layer that goes on these petals. Um, and if you kind of let that dry down a little bit, it'll be much easier. And um, you can see I'm using my strokes a little bit differently when I'm adding this highlight color. I'm not completely blending or completely covering up what, the, um, what I added in the first previous two layers. So you can kind of see that, uh, that those petals have dried down a little bit more and I'm now using those brush strokes to kind of add texture and add a little bit more visual interest um, and a stronger highlight area to those petals. Um, and where there's little folds in the petals, it really kind of helps to show um, tell your story of your petals that there are sort of those folds and hills and valleys and very bright areas where the sunlight would be hitting those petals and again you can accomplish that by um, just hitting those highlights and using your paintbrush in a less blending effect in a little bit more um, sort of distinct marks on those petals and it really does make a difference and add some visual interest and texture to those petals. They still appear soft and smooth, um, but you can see the texture in the petals. And I'm using, um, you know, sort of those a little bit more shorter strokes. And I think you can, hopefully you can kind of see the difference in how I'm applying the paint to those petals. Um, and now I'm beginning the very center, um, refining those areas around those filaments in the very center using a very, um, very teeny tiny little brush. This is a zero size zero liner brush. Um, and I'll use this, I'm adding the shadow color in between the center of those filaments and I'm using, using Hooker's Green, which is a really beautiful kind of a bright Kelly Green color. And uh, I do mix a little tiny bit of purple into that color of green. Um, and then that way, what that does is it helps to deepen the green a little bit to really make it look like the center of that flower 
the center of that little filament, that little bud that's um, the very center is a little bit recessed. You want that to appear to be deeper and darker so that it appears to be sort of a ball and uh, opening out. It's still kind of a budded um, center. So that deep dark color will add um, a lot of, uh, it'll, it'll recess that area, I guess is what, what I would like to say. So that deep dark green was our shadow color on the center of this clematis flower. And so the mid-range color for those little filaments in the center is uh, the medium olive green. That's a really beautiful, bright uh, yellow green. It's really um, kind of like a springy yellow green. So that is our mid-range color for those filaments. So. I am now going to base coat the rest of those little filaments in the center of the clematis using that medium olive green. And you can already kind of see that center coming to life um, with the addition of that medium olive green. So each of those little filaments in the center are going to be base coated now with that medium olive green. And the last mix for the uh, filaments in the center of the flower is that medium olive green and you're going to mix it with some white so that it gets nice and light and bright. So the same thing that we did for the petals using those three different colors, a shadow color, a mid-range color, and a highlight color, we're now just repeating that process on those little teeny tiny little filaments in the center of the clematis flower. This is where it is helpful to have those already drawn in before you start your painting. So again, you know, again, that drawing is kind of your roadmap to know where you're going with your colors, with your painting, and it'll just kind of help to keep you straight. So that last little bit of highlight color gets added to the tips of those filaments to really sort of bring up the highlight color and bring up the visual interest 
on those little filaments in the center of the clematis. You can really kind of see that it makes them pop. And what I also use my little size zero um, liner brush for is to kind of clean up all of the edges and really get that deep dark purple around each of those little filament um, fibers and kind of clean them up and make them look a little bit more realistic. It also serves to give those uh, little filaments a shadow which is really important if you're painting realistically to give sort of a dimension so again like we use the dioxazine purple um, for the shadows on the petals we're going to use it around those filaments and to kind of clean up the edges um, i'll use that little filament brush around the center of the petals um, around the filaments and around the edges to kind of clean up and um, clean up your painting and just make it look a lot more professional. You always get some sort of little, um, no matter how careful you are, your edges just sometimes need, they're a little bit rough um, when you're finished painting and I like to use that teeny tiny little brush to then go around and clean up all of those edges. Um, and just make the painting look a little bit more beautiful and finished looking. And I did go back into the center and add a little bit of the ultramarine blue. You can see um, that that really adds a lot more um, sort of like a true blue. Uh, again, it's to me, it's a purpley blue. Um, I love it. It's beautiful. And um, I just kind of use that in certain areas around the center and on some of the flowers a little bit. Um, and also I'm going to use that teeny tiny little brush with my highlight color and it just sort of hit some of the petals in certain areas, just like I've cleaned up the edges with that dark dioxanine purple. I'm going to use my little tiny liner brush and just go in with my highlight color also and kind of add um, some highlight color to certain areas of the petals um, and you can use it especially to refine those overlap areas um, where one petal is laying over the top of another uh, with that highlight color um, and just adding some fine little uh, strokes of color in the direction that the petals would be growing and moving out towards the center of the flower.
and I think you can see that white really makes a beautiful difference in your petals in the edges of your petals just to kind of add that little last little bit of detail in finishing to each petal and you can see a lot of my lines follow the shape of the petals um, that is hugely important um, that you're following the shape of those petals you're not going against the shape um, you wouldn't be adding straight lines to those petals. Again, you're kind of following the shape of the petals. You can kind of use your finger to blend out a little bit if your lines get a little bit too heavy and a little bit too harsh. Um, but this is the point in the painting where you would just kind of be taking your time and adding that beautiful refined detail to each little petal and assessing what your painting needs. Now this tutorial is just about finished for this beautiful purple clematis flower. If you have any questions on any part of this painting or how to paint your own, um, please drop them in the comment section. I'd be more than happy to help you on your painting journey. And I really appreciate you watching my videos and spending your time on my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.